Hi, I'm Robin Worley. Welcome to Lenscraft. Last week I was out in the Peak District to photograph the heather at sunset. I did manage a couple of shots that I liked before the light faded and the sun hit this big thick bank of cloud. This has thrown out the colour balance on a lot of the images shot around that time, so they're appearing a bit too pink and blue. So today I'm going to walk you through my colour correction for this landscape photo in Capture One. But before we jump into the colour correction, I need to make some other adjustments that are important to the overall result. I'm going to start by selecting a new tone curve for the image. Currently, this is set to Auto, which is picking up the camera setting I was using at the time to shoot the RAW file. Now I shot this using a Fuji X-T3, which was set to use the Fuji Provia film simulation. I find the Provia simulation on the Fuji has a slight pink and purple tint to it, and this could be exaggerating my colour balance problems. Instead, I'm going to change the tone curve to the film standard setting. I find this opens the shadows a little bit and reduces the purple tint slightly. Now I can begin to balance the exposure in the image before I correct the colours. That's because changing the tones in an image can often have an impact on how we see the image colours. To help balance the exposure, I'm just using the high dynamic range sliders because I'm most concerned about the shadows and the highlights in this image. If I push the shadow slider right, it opens the shadows. I can then use the highlight slider to reduce the brightness in the sky by moving it left. After this, I just use the levels adjustment to control the black and white points in the image. And then, to open up the midtones, using the midtone level by pushing it left. I'm still not entirely happy with the highlights in the sky, so I'm going to make some localised adjustments using a gradient mask. Now I'll use the highlights dynamic range slider to darken that area. Now that the exposure on the image is looking more balanced and less contrasty, I'm ready to adjust the overall white balance. I'll do this using the background layer. In this image, I have a nice grey rock that I can use as a white balance target. If I didn't have that, I'd need to adjust the Kelvin and tint sliders manually to achieve the white balance I wanted. When I click on the eyedropper tool in the white balance section, it activates the white balance sample tool. I can then click on the rock that I want to be a neutral grey colour. Sometimes it's useful to click around a few points on the rock just to find what works best. When I find a colour balance that I like, it gives me a starting point to refine with other colour tools. The areas that I want to improve further for this image are the sky, which I feel still looks a bit too red. Also the foreground heather, which I'd like to make more obvious and more colourful. I'll start with the sky because I already have a selection for that. Now there's lots of ways I could adjust the colour in the sky. One way is to use the white balance controls again. But rather than that, I'll demonstrate using the colour editor. I'll start in the basic mode, but might switch to the advanced mode if the basic doesn't give me enough control. As with the white balance, I'll select the picker tool and use it to sample the sky. The area I want to adjust is near to the brightest part of the image because it looks a little bit too red there. After sampling this area, I can see the editor has selected the orange colour swatch. Now I can use the hue slider to move the orange tones in the sky towards yellow. Also, adding a little saturation and lightness helps to keep the image adjustment looking natural. This has improved the sky, but I can improve it further by tweaking the white balance of the layer. Reducing the tint slightly removes more of the redness, whilst reducing the Kelvin slider then reintroduces blue to the thicker clouds. Now I can create a new layer with the gradient filter to select the foreground. I'm going to use this to adjust the heather by first increasing the tint slider to introduce more pink into that area. Then I'm ready to make a targeted adjustment of the heather using the colour editor. This time, rather than sampling the colour and then using the sliders, I'm going to click and drag with my mouse. When I drag left and right, I adjust the hue for the sample colour. If I drag up and down, I'm affecting the saturation. 
And if I hold down my Alt key or my Option key on a Mac, whilst I'm dragging left and right, I can control the lightness. What I want to achieve is a strong pink colour for the heather, as well as making it lighter and more obvious in the scene. When I have the colour roughly as I want it, I'm going to darken the overall image so that it doesn't look like it's now the middle of the day. Rather than using the exposure or brightness sliders for this, I'm going to use the tone curve. What I like about the tone curve is that it gives me precise control over different tonal ranges. By adding a midpoint to the curve and dragging it down, I can darken the entire image without affecting the black or white points. Because I'm using an RGB curve rather than the Luma curve, this adjustment intensifies the colours just a little bit further. The downside to what I'm doing though is that it's closing up the shadow areas and it's making them a little bit too dark so you can't see the detail in there. If I add a point to the curve on the shadow tones and then move it up, I open up the shadows giving the image this softer feel. After this, I can go back to the adjustment layer for the foreground to refine the colour balance and tonal adjustments. The image is looking a lot better, so let's compare it with the starting image. This looks about right, so at this point I'd take the image into Photoshop to apply the next level of refinement and adjustment. Now, there are a few important points that I want to highlight about what I've done in this video. First, I haven't separated adjusting colours and tones. By this I mean I recognise the two need to work together to achieve a finished result. You can't just edit the colours and ignore the image tones. Second, I've made temporary adjustments to the tones to allow me to work on the colours better. I also haven't tried to do everything with just a quick adjustment or done it on a single layer. I've built up the effect gradually. Thirdly, I've divided the image into different areas that need different treatments. That allows me to work on each one independently. This gives me a greater control over the finished result and it keeps things looking natural. For example, I couldn't correct the colour in the sky without negatively affecting the foreground and heather. I also couldn't adjust the heather without affecting the sky. Finally, I'm not trying to achieve a finished image in a single tool. Capture One is my RAW converter. It's extremely powerful and it can achieve a lot, but I want to use other tools that I think might better suit the finished image. The conversion I've created is only my starting point for the finished image. Now I hope you've found today's video helpful. If you have, please take a moment to share it and don't forget to subscribe. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you next week for another video.